Hey guys, it's me, it's the Rec. Um, today I wanted to do a quick video um, off stream uh, regarding this person's uh, grayscale coloring attempt. Um, so I wanted to talk about basically how to, uh, after you're done the 14-day challenge, what's really expected of you after that. You might just finish it and not know what to do next, and you have all this new skill, or you discovered you know you've you've uh, pushed past your threshold cap, and you can last longer on a on a painting and render further and really um, use reference as well. But it's only until grayscale, and then all of a sudden you feel like when you go into color, like you've forgotten all of that stuff. Uh, but really, it's it, grayscale. Everything you learn on grayscale, you still know it, even though it might seem like you don't when you try to redo everything off grayscale and in color. This isn't really like how to paint realistically uh, tutorial, it's not one of those tutorials, but it does um, show how to transfer colors realistically um, by critiquing this one. So basically when you do transfer over, don't, don't transfer the color of the background either. Uh, so you're not supposed to transfer the color of the eyes or the color of the background into that sepia tone, that skin tone. Neither of them should be transferred. And the reason why is because when we do that, things tend to look really, really super washed out. So I'm just getting a color layer and I'm canceling that out. As soon as we cancel this out, well, the eyes don't have much on them, but I'll still try to bring down that sepia tone. But when we do try to transfer color to grayscale and we go in with that beige color, that really, really super strong beige color, um, and we think we can just uh, transfer that over so seem it's not going to work like that because the colors tend to look very muddy. So what I'm going to what I'm going to do is show you first where the color mistakes or the shade mistakes, value mistakes are in this in this painting by looking at the grayscales and see if these grayscales would ever be able to um, kind of allow color through. So I'm going to try to find a good uh, lasso job here or a good lasso number. Oops, I'll back down. Maybe 50 or 60. Might catch it a little better. <laughs> I'm probably just going to stay there. But this background color, what I'm going to do, with, with the colors turned off, so this background value, sorry, it needs to go up. Once it goes up, it acts like the room, the third part of the light environment. So light environment is three-parter. The color of the background, the color of the light source, and the direction of intensity of the light source, all the qualities of the light source combined on the object and the background. So the background, if the object is lit up, the background has to be lit up as well. The light is strong enough. And when we always create our, or add our characters or throw our uh, characters or our models into these really, really dark backgrounds, you're never going to learn how to... Um, paint a character that is outside or paint a character that is part of a larger light environment in an atmosphere. So now that we did that and I've turned off this um, grayscale layer, we can see that the colors that you had before were way too orange and that the, your values were just a little bit dark so I have to push these values over into the reds. And by doing that we get rid, rid of a lot of that green. Beige, darker skin tone, so it seems like you're painting a darker skin person darker skin tones have this um, this uh, kind of desire to stay yellow. They don't really allow a lot of the colors. So, so compared to skin tones that are really pale, uh, Caucasian, really, really light skin tones allow a lot of purples and greens through that come from underneath the skin. The skin is not opaque. It's translucent. Uh, so it shows a lot of the colors through. It's like a partially see-through cup or a film or wax paper. Um, it isn't completely see-through, um, and it isn't completely opaque. So it's going to let some of the colors through, but because dark-skinned uh, skin, or dark-colored skin, or, or, or dark values um, are so dark, they're not going to allow, even though they're translucent and are a see-through wax paper kind of film, they are so dark they're not allowing as much color through as possible. So because they're so invested with so much color, the purples and the greens and all of that stuff that happens underneath skin tones, with the blood and the muscles and the veins, it doesn't show through as, as clearly as light skinned. So with makeup, women use a lot of color corrector if they, uh, if they have a really light skin. They use a lot of reds and greens to, I mean, they use a lot of greens to cancel out the excessive red and purple around their nose and around their eyes. 
Um, and once they have that corrector layer, then they put their foundation on to have that perfect kind of olive skin tone, that perfect even shade around, because foundation alone doesn't do it. That's exactly the same example uh, with painting. You have to make sure that your skin tone, if you're painting a darker skin tone, you're not painting a Caucasian skin tone, you have to allow um, or, or decrease the amount of greens and yellows you have in there and we start off with the base tone. So these corrections alone have transformed the skin type here. So the background color was really confusing you. You have to grayscale the background because it will throw you off. It will not allow you to see whether or not you have the right temperature or the right hue um, and the right saturation for the skin tone and after we have a little bit more realism. For paler skin tones, we don't really get that yellow in the highlights because there's always already so much yellow in the highlight, um, anywhere where the light touches on the skin basically, we get more of the white. So there's already so much yellow and, and warmth already in the base tone that we started with for us to really make it feel like the skin has reflected the temperature of the light source. We have to get the exact whiteness of the light source and reflect that on. So let's take a look at what this correction did before. After it just brings in it actually like a mirror like it brings in that specular quality that is on the skin itself So it's not just about light beige But with a little bit of yellow in it, and that's where you stop No, on top of that light beige highlight yellow leaning um, a Highlight color we bring in a white a pure white that we throw on top Anywhere where the light touches anywhere where it's most wet with oil and water um, That's where we bring in the white so that's what I'm doing here. I'm desaturating anywhere where you have highlights. I'm also going to do something next, uh, probably the most unusual thing that you'll see, which is desaturating the shadows. Uh, the reason why we have to desaturate the shadows is twofold. They're oversaturated right now because your values are way too dark in that area. Uh, it seems like she has two different kinds of skin tones in, in between her face and the sides of her face. So we have to, this, this mistake is common. What I'm going to do is, um, with a new layer, I'm just going to use a lighten layer, a lighten color or layer mode. And I'm going to lighten this. And once I do that, we'll see we don't need as much saturation as we had before, so we can desaturate it. I'm just going to turn on the values and edit it with the values or the grayscale enabled. That way I can see exactly how much I need to go up. Even skilled artists who have the eye for correcting their own work still need to grayscale sometimes just to assess whether or not they're breaking some fundamentals. And as we know, fundamentals are simple, but it doesn't mean, uh, or basic, but it doesn't mean they're simple. Okay, so I'm just creating this dark value or sharper value for the shadow of the neck. The neck doesn't seem to, or the, the nose isn't really casting a shadow, so there might not be that strong a shadow on the neck. Wherever there's a cast shadow on the nose, um, that's where you know you need a cast shadow on the neck. And I'm going to use that as a chance to make an even sharper edge for the jawline. It needs to be much sharper than you made it. It felt like she was tucking in her, her chin into her neck. Okay, and then I'm going to just blur that out. Alright. So, before after. So the darkest darks that you're supposed to have are supposed to be the outsides, but when they're so dark that they're creating like a different instances or separated instances of different skin tones attached on the same face, it just shows it was not a deliberate, it was not a, a intentional choice, it was an accidental choice. You weren't sure exactly how dark you were supposed to go. When we do that, again it corrects it even further, but you see how muddy everything looks because a dark value can't have that much red. And when we do go darker and d painting African skin tones or that Nubian face, we're supposed to push into the purples. Purple is the last color that looks good in darks. And that's why nearly all of those really, really, really dark skin types are leaning towards like an eggplant, that pretty eggplant color, which is like a red that is just on the edges of purple and we're choosing values all the way down here. And that's because purple is still very vibrant on, in, in, in dark values, but red is not. Red turns muddy. And that's why we get muddy colors. Alright. So this is one way to desaturate it. So I used a value that was desaturating, des desaturating already, but what I can do is I can just get the sponge tool and desaturate just a little bit more. 
Again, these values have already so much richness in them. These skin tones are rich with color that the purples, that whole phenomenon with yellow and purples, um, highlights and shadows respectively, that doesn't really happen with beige skin tones or tan skin tones, as you might have noticed in your journey. So those really, really come through when we're talking about really, really pale, pale skin. That's when we see that exemplified. We can still bring in greens in the lower parts of the eye because what doesn't matter what kind of skin type you have or skin color, the, the skin of the eye is the most, uh, doesn't have a lot of reinforcement muscle-wise behind it or bone-wise. It's pretty much hollowed out behind there. And it just hangs there as well. It's an extra little bit of skin so that your eye can function as a joint similar to your knuckles. So it tends to be very, um, not a lot of um, main blood structures move under there and give it that purple tone. So it gets a lot of, a lot, a lot it lacks in reds. Doesn't necessarily mean it turns green, but because there's so little red, the lack of red makes a green happen. But let's say you have this orange, and then you move up away from the reds and into the yellows. Let alone the yellows, it's already looking so green. And let's say you have this yellow color right here and then you're moving into the purples so you're moving into the purples this way All right. moving into the purples where are the purples? there are no purple <laughs> and that's because yellow exists in a really really high plane the lower we go that's when purples happen so they're exact opposites um, and that's really what, what, what the point is here today, is that you're not supposed to just bring in these uh, secondary colors. I'm going to show them, show you what they are in a second. But you're not supposed to be bringing them in just like that willy-nilly. Uh, you're supposed to be bringing them in an amount that is pleasing. Simply doing this is enough sometimes. So just bringing in the desaturation tool, which is the sponge tool and desaturate, and just desaturating around the eyes will give us that purple we need. Even though it's a, a green we need, sorry, even though it's gray, I grayed it out. But it feels green because compared to all this red around it, um, the, 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 the lack of red, the amount of red that our eyes have been exposed to, suddenly there's a drop in red, it's going to read as green in our eyes. So I desaturated that area around the eyes. I'm going to also highlight the areas around the nose. I think you've shared value words here. So this cavity here in the eye socket um, warrants this dark uh, drop in the values but the sides of the nose are part of an upward facing light um, like the upward part of the face looking up so what would happen is that they would actually need more value or more highlight on them and I'm just gonna bring back those highlights skin isn't completely mattified right now your version is looking just a little mattified so I'm just gonna bring that highlight back in I'm going to connect some into the cupid's bow and then some on the cheek, the upper, kind of like the, that upper lip, that mustache area. I call, I used to call them a milk mustache. <laughs> a little bit on the eyelids. Eyelids are very oily. Again, they're part of the eye system. The mechanics of the eye need a lot of hydration in order to function properly. So we're just bringing in a little extra highlight just so that it seems like it is as oily as it usually as, as it usually comes in. All right. <clears throat> so that said, what we're going to do now is I'm going to decrease the excess reds in the lips because the lips right now are coming f are, are using a red that's a little too pink. So we're going to start there by using the right kind of red. So the red that needs to be used here, let's see how low it is in, in the red uh, slider, in the slider for the red section, where your skin tone is all the way here. This is a, a natural drop into the cools that doesn't come from this uh, skin type. So it feels like she's wearing lipstick. So what we usually do is we move slightly, only slightly to bring in some reds, and we move on a curve. So we're sliding down, and we're moving on a curve, and we're only going to use some of this. So that's one of the first things that I'm going to do is correct this lip and you'll see it has way less reds in it because it's pulling from an orange. I'm going to use the same thing here. The most saturation you can have is in the midtones. The midtones are not shadow or highlight, they're just the little space in between. And that's where I'm going to bring in that red that I borrowed from the lips. 
onto anywhere where there's a mid-tone. So you can see what happens when it hits the highlights. It acts like some sort of vibrant, uh, luminous color. Your, your, your blush tones cannot touch the highlights. There's a different kind of red that you need to find in order to make them work on the highlights. But this one right here, the basic one, the one that matches the skin type, has to be a really, really orange, close to the base color kind of red. So before, after. And that redness is just the right amount of saturation. We'll see before what it looked like and how it looks like now. All right, so next, next I'm gonna bring in that green I was talking about. So again, I'm gonna, always when you're choosing a new color, choose where you already are currently in the area you're gonna apply the color to. So this, this color, I'm gonna apply it to the lower eyelids. I'm gonna start here. Move the slider towards the greens, but I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm never gonna hit green. I'm gonna hit into the yellows. That's all the green that I need. See, this area was almost completely desaturated. I'm just slightly moving into the yellows, we start getting the green that we need. It's about creating neighboring colors or choosing from neighboring colors. You see, we barely got any green. We weren't even picking out of the green, out of the yellow, and this is more than enough green. Imagine if I painted with, with full opacity, right? Looks like a very, very bright, vibrant green, but that's exactly where we're going to place that, that green shade really low opacity though you have to be very very careful not to overdo it and then I erase away okay I'm also going to get another color layer and then on top of the reds that I already applied I'm just going to kinda bring that general blush down on the lips so that it feels a little bit more natural if it's too saturated it works as a of focal point. I'm also going to get rid of the red in the shadow here in the neck area. After that, what happens is you have very little mid-tones and a lot of contrast. So I'm going to try to introduce some more mid-tones on the cheeks. She seems like she has um, not chubby cheeks but full cheeks. So I'm going to try to do that. Seems like it's a very clear cutoff point where the shadows happen, even after all our editing. So the forehead is a very large space, so you have a diversity in values happen on the forehead. It's not just clear cut. We do create these edges for the temples, but even then we blend them. We start with an edge and blend away until it feels organic and not geometric. We also do a very important thing, which is desaturate anywhere where there's hair. So if she had a beard, uh, we would desaturate around her beard. So when I'm painting like a burly man or whatever, I just desaturate here and it <laughs> looks like she has a beard, doesn't it? All you have to do is just desaturate. The skin under a beard is very different from the skin on the rest of the face because it's got little hairs, little hairs growing in there that haven't come out yet that disturb all that redness and add a green to it. So they get rid of a lot of the blood to take up space where blood would have been. Okay, so I'm just doing that here. You are missing a waterline. So I'm just gonna, real quick, let me just do the bone structure here for the side of the face. Bone structure does have more harsh edges than fatty pockets in the face, like the cheeks or the lips. <clears throat> I think this face is very, very androgynous as well, especially since I added that beard. <laughs> and the shadows that you're using are not very um, intriguing. We seem to have, we seem to lose a lot um, of form when we don't use cast shadows. Edge work is also a little bit lacking. It's kind of too blended or over blended. So some edge work would really be um, useful here to bring out some detail. And I'm just going to, this edge that you have for the between the eyes and the cheek is a little too strong. And typically this crease of the lower eyelid doesn't travel all the way to the inner, inner corner of the lower eyelid. I'm going to take some of that black and place it on the outside ever so slightly to show that the compression or the traffic of the 
lashes. And then I'm going to bring that pure white right back and just throw it anywhere where we have. I should probably do it on a new layer so I can erase away. Anywhere where we have highlights. And then I'm going to run over once again all the shadows and desaturate them. Typically on a Caucasian skin tone we run over it with a purple but because this already has so much red in it we don't do the purple. Alright, so I'm going to create a nice edge here. This is the edge of the upper lower lip on the rest of the chin. As you can see this white is really really important. And then I'm going to desaturate. So skin itself is very, it's a very uh, pale color. It's a very pale shade. When we oversaturate it, we're usually, usually looking at uh, some kind of photograph that, that is oversaturating it. But uh, when we paint it really to pull off that, that, that uh, blush, that, that really isn't that much saturation, we have to start on a pretty desaturated base, especially because this skin already, this person's skin is so dark, they have enough saturation in there. We have to remember to desaturate as a filter. So I'm just going to show you real quick before and after. Very vibrant, just outside of the usual things that skin does, which it doesn't really saturate like that. I'm going to check our values again. Our values seem seem okay. I don't see any dark spots where there shouldn't be. There is still some edge work around the lips, but I'll take care of that in a sec. So let's take a look at the before and after. Let's just choose the part where we had the grayscale. Alright, so I'm going to try to get the grayscale of this into that. Why doesn't that work? Oh, because it's color. That's right. Alright, so before. Uh, um, before. <laughs> Sorry about that. Before and after. And what you had before was uh, muddy. It was too yellow. Um, it was like a kind of a photograph that was really oversaturated and overexposed and over filtered. It didn't feel like naturally occurring shades. And after. We have a much less uh, kind of, um, I guess the word is artificial looking colors. And if you wanted to darken the skin tone, you would just have to remember the rule that if you darken, you can't oversaturate it, but you do have to pull from cooler reds that are not necessarily purple. So you're limited to like an orange or a yellow. So we would probably choose from these values, which is really, really close to gray. Again, we're not dark enough that we can get purples and go full African skin tone. Um, and we're not light enough to use pure purples, pure reddish purples. So we're stuck in the, in the middle, which is orange. So if we were to darken or re-darken it, we have to darken it this way. Where we use the, just the darker version and then just cancel out a lot of those values. Oops, wrong layer. Okay, so darken. Oops. And we just cancel out. So don't mind the fuzz on the outside, but we just get rid of this area on the eyes. Bring back some of the highlight as they ha as it happens on the on the nose. Not all of it though using a very basic soft brush some of these highlights here come back but if you wanted to darken this is pretty much what you would have to do you just get rid of that the mid-tone you close the mid-tone gap and you use less white so I'm just gonna in fact I can make this much easier just like that don't mind that. So this is this would be the color if it was just a little bit darker. And if you desaturate and darken, you can get like a nice, even, realistic movement in the in the values without using too much green. And the point is really at the end of the day, you're painting a darker skin tone, a tanned olive skin tone. Tan means a lot of red is in there. It doesn't mean a lot of yellow. So when we start bringing in these yellowish 
like it's an orange, but it's an orange that's leaning more to yellow than red in order to paint a tan skin, you're not going to pull it off. And then you're going to, you know, be misguided and then bring in greens for the eyes and then purples into the shadows. It's just going to look terrible because these are from three different completely skin, completely different skin tone types. Okay, so what you had before is very unrealistic. Brought in just a little bit of extra chunk in the in the cheeks, but I can just take a little bit of it back because this is still the outside and it is still an androgynous face. Androgynous face has a, a little bit more bone structure than the usual usual kind of feminine face. A little less than the usual masculine. <clears throat> So just remember that when you are done with your 14 day challenge and you're ready to transfer your grayscales into color, these rules are, are very confined to each skin type group. You can't mix them unless you've thoroughly um, attempted all three and, and kind of found yourself a, uh, a critiquer to someone to critique your work. Looked at a couple references, but if all you know about skin types is that, you know, beige and then yellow and then purple, that's not enough. Okay, so if this person was a Caucasian, um, then we would have lots of purples, lots of different colors come in, and we would change a lot of what's going on. So in my website, I, I have showcased one of my students, like one one of my paintovers for a student work. Um, and they, their, their character was Caucasian. I'll just show you real quick what I did with them. Okay. So right along here, as you can see, we brought the greens, we brought the purples, we made a more purple pink than an orange pink. This looked like a fake tan kind of, of skin type, where here we brought the whites back, we brought the blues in. And we brought a lot of the white back that's being reflected, not just white, but the white and the yellow, and we've desaturated a lot. And skin comes in very, very desaturated. So before, your values were just a little bit stressed, and they had jumps, like they were jumping in between really, really dark and really light. And you were trying to saturate on top, so you had the muddy thing going on and the tan thing. Even just sliding it over corrected a lot. Just doing this corrected a lot. But even then we can see that this is still too dark. The outsides are still too dark. And after, we we're kind of working from a more realistic skin type. Now as for the edges, um, usually with edge work, I, uh, I start with the outside edge of the face. So I usually edge out the complete edges of the face as far as possible. So I like to inverse. And that means we're slowly receding the edge of the face into the, the, the deepest dark. So we're not outlining and we're not doing as much as you did when you started off, which was way too dark. It changed the value of the skin tone. This dark is the framing dark that happens because it's receding into the light environment. And typically this light environment, this light source outside, would, uh, would just cancel it out and bring in a secondary light source just like that just on the sides as well, if you really want to take it um, to another kind of more realistic uh, angle. All right, for the edge work of the nose, um, the nose is just too furry. It's, it's too uh, fuzzy. It's too blended. It has a glow to it. And that's not uh, acceptable because a nose is, is part of a really, uh, uh, it's a perfect example of a, one object in front of the other to create an edge. Objects that don't share the same plane, that have a distance in between them, don't share an edge, therefore they don't share value, so they never blend. There are lots of instances like this across the face where we just have an unblended edge like this. The seam where the nostril does eventually connect to the cheek is off screen, it's behind the nostril. We're looking at the edge. Over here, for the cheeks, especially um, the cheeks that eventually connect into the lower eye. We have some more of that to make sure I don't get rid of your green. The crease of the eye is one of the most important edges of the face. And of course I'm going to take some of this pink and make that waterline happen. It's just that one level of realism, like one step above her eyes. Take some of that white 
throw some of it where the water line is most wet. And that alone is starting to take us to a different kind of a more believable render. Probably gonna grab one of this these skin brushes and just um starting to feel more like a man than a woman as we continue painting, but it started off very androgynous as well. Which is cool. I think this kind of face is the best kind of face to take on for 14 day challenge. That way you cover both male and female requirements in your portfolio. And you can show your potential employers that you are very care capable of kind of doing um, either instead of just depending on one too much. It's usually, it's usually women that we that we overdraw. Just making sure that L shape is there as connect as it connects into the temple. I'm just going to blend that out. That's actually on dark. Okay. We're just continuing the before and after, getting back some of that cheekbone. I feel like you, you did have a nice little bone structure there where we added that extra fat, but we were just missing out on so much value and so much mid tone, I think. Oops. No, that's not what I'm supposed to do. That's right here. So we can see this little bit here. It's, it's, it's a nice touch, but it feels very masculine and doesn't have that, that uh, extra little level of, of form that we get when we bring in a mid-tone. The edges of the lips. Um, I see no re real radial shading anywhere around here. So some radial shading might really help you develop just that extra level of form along the z-axis, and that just means building up your values along like a like a, a little hill of sand. And what I'm going to do next is just get the dodge tool, probably on mid-tones, maybe even just on highlights, and then just desaturate right after. So dodge tool and sponge tool I use together because dodge tool saturates and highlights, and I don't want any saturation on the highlights. I want to keep making sure that we're pulling from a white for this face. Use the same thing along the nose. And I'm building this, this value radially, just so that the nose feels oily and it's, it's reaching a high point. And then again, just follow up with sponge tool so we're not overdoing these shadows. I'm going to bring down the value for the the blush. Remember, blush has a a darkness to it, so areas that are too light can't have blush in them because blush is coming from a red, and red is a very dark primary. Values in between the eyebrows should be just a little darker, but depending on where the light source is coming from, it feels like you're painting with the light source head on. The edges of the nose um, are one of the most problematic areas. If you don't have an edge there, you really miss out on a lot of form. Okay, so I'm just going to make that edge happen. And then blend away where it does taper off and connect into the skin on screen. And that's pretty much it. I mean, there's a lot left for me to do. Probably should bring that cheekbone back, or else I, I would have changed the face. But I feel like I shouldn't. It's kind of that moment between your instincts and your desire not to change the face too much from what the artist originally intended. But you know there should be more, more, a little bit more uh, mid-tones there. So a little bit more different than what you had, but probably could could introduce some mid-tones here if I used like a half opacity. 
still want to keep some of those mid-tones. It kind of made the face feel more fleshy and less geometric. Before, after. All right, so I hope this, this helped you. Um, I do recommend trying a little bit more uh, of the 14-day challenge just so that, and then stay away from photographs. I feel like this was very closely uh, made with a photograph. Um, try to do some of this on your own. And if you do need a reference, just kind of glance at a reference instead of photo, like copy it photorealistically. Um, you need to practice your edges furthermore on the um, on, on the lips, on the on the eyes, and uh, a lot of these issues really just link to edge work and just doing form studies. Form studies like the the base practice, the the base um, study method, the base study subject that you should do with your creative with your creative part of your brain just turned off, and you just do it just for the sciences just so that you can make sure um, that you're taking in some of those fundamentals. They are basic, but they're not simple. So I hope this tutorial helped you. Um, good luck for, with everyone who's finished their 14-day challenge and is going into color. Uh, I salute you for finishing 14 days straight of drawing a face, uh, but there's just so much more work left to do. Make sure that you do it efficiently. Form studies are like a, a coverall kind of um, uh, study ha like study subject. It just covers all kinds of issues. It's a fix-all and it's a very efficient uh, fix-all. It may work fast but it works very efficiently as well so it's not fast and um, not very effective. It's very effective. So um, let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm sorry about the slow process today. I hope this tutorial helps you guys. Bye-bye.